For more on all of this, we're joined by Mercedes Colwin, trial attorney and former federal prosecutor and a former judge, and Nima Rumani, also a former uh, prosecutor out in Los Angeles. All right, Mercedes, Comus faces now more than a dozen civil suits. These latest two are involving boys who were both under age at the time of the alleged offenses. Combs denies it, but I got to tell you, the sheer volume of these accusers is really striking. This is one of those where there's smoke, there's fire. And the more allegations and the more individuals and the more lawsuits that come forward, many of us sit back and say, there has to be some truth to this. Especially when you really dig deep into those allegations, Elizabeth, they're very specific in terms of what they're accusing Combs of having done to them. So with that, and of course, they're being filed in federal court. Well, there's a lot of process that, that still remains to be seen. It's in the civil proceeding. There are written questions. There are testimony that's taken. There's motions to be done. There's a whole plethora of discovery vehicles that you really will get down to a granular level as to what the allegations are, what specifically took place. And interestingly enough, in civil proceedings, Combs has to testify. If he chooses to then just assert the Fifth Amendment right, which he can do, there is automatically a presumption that he has done something wrong. He doesn't have the Fifth Amendment protection when it comes to at least the penalties of it when it comes to civil proceedings. Criminally, he doesn't have to be forced to testify. Civilly, he will. So this is where you right. start to see the traction taking place, the civil versus the criminal side. Yeah, it's important to note that in a criminal trial, you have the right not to testify, and the judge will instruct the jury you cannot Im you know, assume guilt. Like, you can't attach exactly. any sort of presumption into a person's choice not to take the stand. Um, Nima... Combs' legal team has denied all these charges and is accusing the lawyer, this Tony, Bu Tony Busby, um, of being more interested in media attention than the truth. Um, they write, this is obvious. You can tell from his constant press appearances and his 1-800 number. Um, what do you make of that strategy? Um, I mean, is there... A, I mean, it is kind of stunning that this one lawyer in Texas has filed all these suits representing more than 100 plaintiffs. Well, the best defense is often a good offense, and attacking the lawyer in the case is something that good criminal defense lawyers and civil defense lawyers do. But it doesn't change the facts of this case. Tony Busby may be doing this to garner attention and drive publicity, and frankly, to get more clients. But that doesn't change the fact that you have over 100 individuals who are telling pretty much the exact same story of physical and sexual violence. They meet Combs, they're drugged, and they're sexually assaulted. And, you know, maybe one person or two or three or four can lie, but jurors are not going to disbelieve a hundred people that are coming and testifying. Now, obviously, we're not going to have a hundred witnesses, but this is how you can easily overwhelm a civil or criminal defendant. We've seen it time and time again yeah. with folks like... And, and You know, once you have a dozen witnesses, that's it, Elizabeth. Biddy's done. And Nima, what about the fact that in these latest two cases, they're both minors? I mean, they're that, that's it's shocking. They're boys. One was a ten-year-old boy at the time. It's shocking. It's unconscionable. But also changes the game. It completely affects Diddy's legal strategy. His lawyers have come out and said that the freakoffs happened, but they were consensual because, of course, adults can consent to sex, no matter how freaky it is. But we know that minors cannot consent to any sexual activity whatsoever. So now, all of a sudden, Combs is going to be in a position where he has to deny that any of this happened at all, that all these individuals are fabricating it, they're lying, this is all about money. So it's going to be very difficult for him to defend. Hey, Mercedes, super quick, one of the lawsuits yeah. that was, uh, one of these many lawsuits was filed by a woman who was anonymous, Jane Doe. A judge right. ruled today that uh, she couldn't use a pseudonym. She had to reveal her real name. Um, it, it, he said that uh, it, it, the case will be dismissed if she doesn't reveal her real name, ruling that, quote, public humiliation is not enough to warrant keeping her identity secret. So, Elizabeth, I've actually made that motion on behalf of clients. It is not an unusual one when you seek to strip the, the Jane Doe de designation of plaintiffs because... In civil suits, you are entitled to know who your accuser is, and you get to know their identity during the course of the litigation. But also, you need to have the right to defend yourself. And in certain circumstances where I have made that very same motion, 
and it's been successful, it's really it's really boiled down to this. What are the detrimental effects to stripping the Jane Doe designation to the individual seeking the anonymity in court? If they can't establish that there is an undue hardship or yeah. that there's undue, perhaps even something that could be tragic to them, their identity is generally stripped in the civil proceeding. Criminal, you can do other things to protect that individual. Yeah, but this but is a civil, civil case. Just at the first blush, that's one of them. We'll be interesting to see what happens if she chooses to reveal her name or chooses to let her case be dismissed. Mercedes Colwin, Nima Romani, um, always great to have both of your expert legal analysis. Thank you so much.